Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back for another Saturday morning with Billy Cross. What's up, Bill? Yes. It's all good. It's all good. All good. It's Saturday sharp this afternoon morning. here. Yeah. The, I'm going for the Clark Kent look. You do have the Clark Kent. Here's the thing about Clark Kent. Like, if you take your glasses off, I would still know who you are. I don't know. How did he get away? Oh, wow. Maybe the point I would... is, I don't know who you are now because I can't see. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. I can totally relate. How does anybody's eyes work? I don't get uh, it. Uh, mine used to be really good, apparently, but not anymore. Mine were never good. I Like, bad genetic draw there. What are we drinking this morning? Are you back to the chamomile we're and honey? On, we're on the chamomile and honey tea. But look at this. Dual weld. Dual wielding. Oh. Great friends. So I invested. Yeah, yeah, we can <laughs> double the cloud strength. Do you know that I just found out? I found a lot about vaping this Go past on. week. Come Who on. knew? Like, <clears throat> I was unaware that there's more nicotine in than there is in a cigarette when it you vape. Depends. It depends what strength uh, e-liquid you have. Uh, That's what we're talking about this week. Vaping. We're just gonna... <laughs> Welcome to the vaping show. <laughs> the two. <laughs> so I've got. I started on the twelve milligram stuff, but now I've lowered it to the six milligram. So you can get like three milligram, and then you can get no nicotine. Well, what's the point of that? But the the point is, like, it doesn't contain the tar and all the other right, shite right. chemicals that are in it. So. Yeah. So you just get the nicotine without all the other nasty carcinogens, theoretically. Exactly. And it's cheaper. And it's cheaper. Let's just see if we can do ten minutes on vaping. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You want me to throw some shapes up over here? Hey, sure. Let's see. <laughs> no, this is the time where we do vaping tricks. <laughs> vape tricks. I watched a video on vape tricks the other day. Nice. How sad is that? Vape Nation. Like, that's the, the most popular video on YouTube for vaping. H3H3, H3, Vape Nation. is basically taking the, the mick out of vaping, is it? But wow. it's funny. All right. It's a channel for everything, dude. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So yeah, so uh, yeah, I, like, I invested. It's like a ten-year anniversary pen from the company that I get my pens from. Yeah, but it's the same one that I had before. It's just like fresh, new battery. Yeah, Makes it I deserve better. it. New you year, you do. You yeah. work hard. New year, new you. New vaping yeah, yeah. pen. <laughs> That's it. It's done. like when you, it's like when you put a new monitor on your computer and everything is faster. Like the, well, I thought, uh, I I need a new monitor because. When I split from my ex, I put my computer in the boot of the car, in the trunk, yeah. sorry, for like two, three weeks. And then oh, when no. I finally got around to getting it out of the, the trunk, it was scratched <laughs> to hell. Like yeah, there's, there's lines on my monitor up in the top corner and it's not – when I'm like trying to design stuff and I can see lines everywhere. It's, it's like, not good. Not great. It's actually not scratched. That's me. I have lines. I oh, is that what it is? Yes, ah, that's what it is. You need Botox. <laughs> I do. Yeah. All right. Very good. <laughs> so, um, welcome. yeah. So, welcome. Welcome, mm. everybody. That's good. We've said absolutely nothing yet. So, mm -hmm. we have a bunch of questions today. I see. We do. We from, do. From our, our little Facebook discussion group. If you're not in the group, I'll put a, a link. Join the group. So, I thought about, I went to bed at about 1 a.m this morning yeah. and i thought to myself like i should post on there now so the u.s people because obviously when i post at like 10 a.m my time you guys are sleeping past the sleep so i should yeah. have posted last night but i was like turned the other way in bed and my phone was behind and i just thought <laughs> it can't be that. That is, ain't nobody got time for that they can well wait. what's what's my excuse we made our plans yesterday and i like <laughs> yes, i thought the same true. thing like i should post now yeah, yeah. No. did i no i didn't either and i was upright so what does that tell you like, I didn't even have to make an effort. My phone was probably in my hand, but I was just yeah, yeah, probably. so effing lazy. Nah, to... <laughs> nah we'll I'll post later. We'll do it That's next fine. week. We'll do it yeah. next week. Post next week. So we have a, a shit ton of questions, good questions we can answer. And then we had our, our good friend Eddie DT last week yes. suggested we, we talk about stress. So I think we should talk about that. So because yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. right. So I'm, yeah, for, I'm yeah. up for that. Eddie, I think yesterday, last week, Eddie had asked about like what happens when you're really stressed at work and then you bring it home and like <laughs> how it affects, you know, like your home life or the other way. If you're like super stressed at home, how would it affect your work? Which is, those are good questions. But I, I think sometimes we get confused, I think, between what is just stress and what mm -hmm. is anxiety and what is like regular anxiety because of just life shit and what yeah, is... Yeah. When does it go into anxiety disorder? And like, mm -hmm. I think people in our situation tend to 
try like they'd have a goal of like let me try and get rid of all of this i need to always be happy and always be like calm and never feel upset and Mm -hmm. that's not that's not realistic in any way the thing for me i stress at home and i work at home so (laughs) so no matter what stress yeah yeah Yeah. that's a thing like especially a lot of people in this situation that wind up trying to find a way to work from home for obvious Mm -hmm. reasons Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and then never that you'd never get away from it. Like it's one like I've seen that question so many times. Like, what do people do to work from home? And like me and you have discussed this before. Like, yeah, it might be a good thing because you can avoid life getting yeah. out there and avoid people and that. But it's not a good thing. Like, if there's any way around it, yeah, take the other route. Like, get out there. I used to work full time and that. I mean, I do what I do now, and I probably wouldn't go back. Right. But that's just because, like, I'm experienced in what I do now. Right, right. You know what I mean? But if I could go back and make the choice, I know that working in a busier place or even if there's just two, three people, whatever it is, it would have been more beneficial, like, anxiety-wise. Yes. Yeah, Mm. that's that thing where the old, like, I want to find a way to work at home because I can't leave the house. What you really Mm. should be working on leaving the house as opposed to Mm -hmm. trying to find a way to accommodate that and work from home. Yeah, yeah. you know, the other thing about working from home, because I could do – like my business could be entirely virtual. I could run my business mm-hmm. from anywhere in the world. And for a while, we were virtual. So like my primary operation – not and that wasn't – that was way past the anxiety or phobia stuff. It was just a business decision. Like we'll just be mm-hmm. virtual. And we would meet at like – you know, here in the US, we have like Panera Bread or Starbucks. We would meet in those kind of places now and then yeah, yeah. Um, when we had to. And that was okay. But working from home could be really isolating too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah, along I the top. That. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, then you never get away from your work also. I guess it depends because, well, you know, you own the business. I own the business. So work mm-hmm. is there 24-7. That's a, that could be yeah, stressful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can ring at any time. People freaking ringing me and saying, I'm coming around your house now. And, like, if I'm freaking out already, then there's, you know, I can't really get out of it. I can't say no. Like, yeah. Like, hold yeah. on. I'm, I'm freaking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please Give don't. me half hour. It's just like <laughs> you deal with it. But I suppose in, in the past, I've turned work away because I've because been feeling bad. Yeah, yeah, You know what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was in my worst times, I totally did that. Uh, that was one of the mm-hmm. things I think that really spurred me on. Like, this is crazy. I'm just – I'm giving up business opportunities yeah, yeah. here. Like, mm-hmm. people wanted to give us money, and I would, like, work around it. It's like, uh, I don't want to go there. Literally uh, go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if I had business meetings where I'd have to go to their place, then I'd be like – be thinking of an exit plan like yeah, i'll pretend yeah. my phone's ringing or something like that it's just just crazy case. all these yeah, preparations yeah. it's like no it's crazy right yeah but yeah. but i think so we were talking about stress then work it's where stress at work stress at home i mean i that's a whole topic we could just have a whole podcast based on stress management yeah I think. yeah, yeah. But, but like then, life is stressful man i was gonna you say can't... yeah like you always get through these things that's the point that i make like Fuck me! Nobody was more stressed out than I was last year. Yeah, like yeah, no. You were you were thrust instantly into like a high high stress situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you just I don't know. For me personally, like I deal with those stressful situations better than I deal with nip into the corner shop for some. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Yeah, just yeah. something takes over. Whether it's like you have to do something about it or I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I think a lot of that is. You're at, so this that's that point. Like, what's the difference between just life stress and the mm-hmm. whole anxiety and fear thing? Or people will ask the question, like, what do you do with people in your life that that trigger your anxiety or make mm-hmm. your anxiety worse? And and I think that's so stress, people, work, any situation. Like, there's a difference. You can't say it makes your anxiety worse. It does, but that means you still have to work on your anxiety stuff. Like, what happens is mm-hmm. life is stressful. People add stress. Your job adds stress. Your dog tears up the sofa. That adds stress. But stress doesn't have mm-hmm. to equal fear and, like, trigger it into panic. and like Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I think the way that happens is most people, like, whatever, if you're at work and your boss is pissing you off because, you know, he or she is just an ass, you might mm-hmm. get stressed. But other people get stressed all the time. You might get angry at your boss, but it doesn't – it should not lead to focusing inward now and worrying about how you're feeling and if, you're, if you're dizzy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think what winds up so happening went, is oh, we had a big yeah, lag, yeah. huge lag. It's okay. 
Mm, we may have to do a little editing here because yeah, you are yeah. frozen. Oh, am I? Even now? Yeah. Oh, now no, you're back now. Me. Yeah, hey, you're back I'm now. Back in the there room. It's because I've got three 12 year olds upstairs on freaking Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, yeah. all running 30,000 devices and <laughs> kids. Yeah, I've been there where like the Wi Fi router is just red hot, just yeah, yeah, yeah. glowing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think what I was saying is, you know, you get into that stressful situation and like stress is something that happens to you from the outside in, which is normal. Mm-hmm. So you'd be yeah, stressed yeah. about like what happened with your ex or like maybe something at work or a money situation. And then most people get stressed and they focused on that external thing. Like I'm That's angry at my boss say. or I need to change this mm-hmm. job or I need to like fix this money problem, like, you know, whatever. But mm-hmm. people in our situation, some external stressor happens and then boom, you turn inward. Like, well, how did that happen? How did like That's your boss point. being an ass turn turn into like how you f- turn into like jelly legs for you? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what stress does for me. It makes it like an external thing. I don't, I don't start thinking about myself. I right. start thinking about the problem. Yeah, like how to solve it. And that's smart. So it gets you out of your own mm. head. You're not yeah, focused. Yeah. Inward. You're not worried about how you feel or what you're thinking. And and miraculously, it's okay. So it's weird because like yeah, because when there used to be problems at home. Like if we were yeah. going through an argument or something like that, I would not be fo- f- focusing on myself at all. Like that's when I'd be good. Yeah. So like that's what I need. I need an argumentative. So <laughs> Tina, if you're watching. <laughs> you, need, you need to start an argument at least once a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need more shit, man. I need to just get Tina, just shovel more shit his way. Throw him some <laughs> yeah. shade is what we need. That's it. We need hostility. Some I'm in the perfect line of business as well because web designer clients are not the best <laughs> I, I understand i can relate i get it they're not gonna watch this they're not gonna watch this they're never gonna no american accounting firm is gonna watch this we are aware no, i hope not that was stressful we did that one together mm. Remember? Mm. yeah mm. that was stressful yeah like, i've done some big jobs i did a job for a big company over here called yodel like a big delivery network and that mm-hmm. was super stressful but yeah. i felt great i felt good like physically like anxiety wise but i was super right. stressed but i could tell the difference Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think so. Here's advice. So to answer, like, follow up on Eddie's uh, question. From, I think here's advice. No, I think we came to something where we could maybe offer actually actionable shit. So, like, when stress happens, whether it's work stress or home stress or whatever, like, focus on the thing that is stressing you, like mm-hmm. the external influence, whatever it happens to be. And that's where most people focus on their stress. And that's what keeps stress from becoming anxiety and fear, mm-hmm. like internalizing it and immediately turning inbound and saying, "Uh oh, well, I had an argument with my wife. So now I'm going to panic and like I'm worried about my legs and being mm-hmm. dizzy and passing mm-hmm. out and having a heart attack, like worry about what she said or like have that yeah, argument yeah. or talk it out or like uh-huh. solve the problem is probably yeah, the yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, how do you deal with just not bringing home work stress or bringing your home stress into work? Stress management stuff. We get Susan in on the call. She'll just talk about meditation. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just think... know when to switch off, I guess, isn't it? Just, well, you're, yeah. you are in control of that. You are in control of it. Just don't take it home. Like if it's stressing you out, draw the line. Do something right. else. Distract right. yourself from it. Focus on the things that make you feel happy, man. Yeah. And, and you could, I, I've heard so many different tips and tricks over the years, like stress management, like schedule time to think about it, schedule yeah, yeah. worry time. Like, mm-hmm. and then when you're done with that, all right, here's my 30 minutes to worry. Uh-huh. That's all. I'm going to do something else now. That's, that's a good tip, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But so much of what we talk about, like that, that thing where like, well, when the anxiety is screaming at you and you just need to put your focus where you want it to be like mm-hmm. these tools for me, what I could say, my own personal experience, the tools and the skills that I built getting over yeah. like mm-hmm. panic disorder or phobia, like have served me well in terms of just being stress management tools, mm-hmm. because I can say, well, now I'm going to think about this and, yeah, I can yeah. think about that, and now I'm mm-hmm. not going to think about this and I can move my focus somewhere else. So just i don't know like same principles same principles right just not in like emergency or crisis mode use mm-hmm. the same tools and techniques yeah 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 knowing where to put your focus and where it's most useful at, at any given time i guess Easy. Keep, keeps you from going home and kicking the dog i guess or yeah, going yeah, to work exactly. and yell, no, yelling that, at your that, boss 
Yeah, that is exactly what it is. Let's have a drink. Let's have a drink. Let's just. I'm on the water. I'm on the water. I have, yeah, I have a giant bottle of water. It's it's rude to just swing. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it. It's a real man's bottle of water. (laughs) What's mine then? English pussy man. (laughs) No, that's not what you're I was commenting on James Bond. The actual comical size of this water. I was out and around yesterday and I had the water in the car and I was so thirsty. So I bought this like 72 gallon <laughs> bottle of water just because I was super thirsty. And it was like a dollar. So I uh, thought, thought you were mocking the size of my water. Hell no. Would I do that? I would never do that to my friend. <laughs> oh, no, not the size of your water bottle. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a left turn right. fast. Yeah, quick, <laughs> reel it in. Back up, back yeah, up yeah. reel it in, reel it in. Um, yeah. So that's there you go. That's our seven minutes on stress. Do we say anything useful? I think we did more time on vaping than that, didn't we? <laughs> possible, possible that we did. Oh, should well. we go? In, should we go into questions from the group? There's quite, yeah. There's a few. There's a good lot ones of in there, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you posted and everybody's diving in here. So let's that's see here. Let let's. You want to just go through them? From the top, man. From the top, Michelle. Michelle Harris. Health anxiety is taking over my life. Well, it's not really a question, but okay. Michelle, that's a statement. Yeah, statement. yeah, that's all right. She's not Health alone. Anxiety, man. She's not alone. alone. There's a few. There's I've so seen a few. Yeah, yeah, a few comments in the group. Um, yeah. I know Andrea posted something. Andrea is a friend of mine. She joined the group okay. like last week or so. She's having like stomach issues and stuff like that. Right. Which is just causing health anxiety and. It happens. I, I wish I had more experience. I, I don't have that experience, so, so it's I, so difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, I do. And I yeah. say, like, I'm kind of, I'm almost over it, I guess. But I've got, I've had a dodgy stomach for like three days now. But yeah. it's just not, it's not like the same as it used to be. I'd be thinking, oh shit, something's wrong. I'd be yeah. asking, I'd be asking my ex, like, do I look all right? Or, because that was the thing I used to do. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. This is stupid. I used to, because my son is pale, like Josh. He's pale for some reason. He always has been. So I right. used to say, I used to say to him, "Let's do the pale test." So I'd make him stand next to me. We'd look in the mirror, and I'd be like, "Right, I'm not as pale as you. I'm I'm good. So I'm good. So to go. good. Right. <laughs> yeah. exactly. As long as he's whiter than me. Ah, jeez. This it's is weird. how our brain works. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But now I've got nobody to do that, to ask those questions. Like Josh ain't here, and my daughter's freaking browner than me so that ain't gonna work don't stand next to her no 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 geez so (laughs) like for me i just don't research stuff anymore like i i just try not to think about like my stomach's dodgy okay maybe i eat ate something that's upset my stomach or i don't know it could be could be anything could be anything and if i don't know (laughs) that's my advice could be yeah It could be anything. It, it's so difficult, though, because people are gripped with this stuff. I know, like, Stephanie, Stephanie actually in the group, um, she actually started, a, a, like, a no Google or a health anxiety group. And Steph, mm-hmm. I guess, if you, you know, I can link it. That's fine. So a bunch of people have kind of started discussing health anxiety in their own group, which is great. Um, and that seems to be the number one thing. Like, the yeah, compulsion. Yeah. The health anxiety appears to be a compulsion in a lot of mm-hmm. ways. Um, I want to Google my symptoms. I need to, I want to learn. I want to ask. I want to see. I want to mm-hmm. compare. I want to check. I want to check. I want to check. I know some people who are just compelled. I want to check my heart rate. I want to check my blood pressure. I, they mm-hmm. can't not do it. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think health anxiety is, I'm almost beginning to think is its own thing. Yeah, like, yeah, it is. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Like it's its and... own thing. The only the only way that I've sort of managed to wean myself off the checking in that is yeah. to just notice when I was doing it and just stopping doing it. Like I don't Google anything anymore. Like right. a stupid thing. Like my dad's got a blood pressure monitor. Um, yeah. Like I used to borrow it for like a month at a time or something, and I'd be constantly checking it, and I'd be great. But if I took it and it was low or high, it'd freak me out. Like, but before I took my freaking blood pressure, I was absolutely fine. So yeah. what's the point in doing that? that's a really good there's one particular person i mean she's very open about it but i'm not going to say her name and she'll watch Mm -hmm. this i'm sure like the blood pressure thing so what was going through your head so you'd borrow her like there's i have a blood pressure cuff in my house yeah yeah. i just never ever use it Uh um like were you worried that your blood pressure was high and that's why you would check it it just became a habit just like i'd check if i maybe if i had a symptom or something yeah check 
check my blood pressure. That would be the go-to thing. Yeah. But it wouldn't be bothering me that much. But I'd check my blood pressure, and if it was off, even though I don't really know what the fuck it's supposed to be, yeah. but I just know, like, oh, that looks a bit dodgy, or it's different to what it was last time. There must be something right. wrong. But no, I felt exactly the same before when I, before I took it. Now I'm freaking out because I think something's wrong. It's tough. Don't it's do tough. It. Just that don't compulsion do it. to check and Google, right? I think it's that's easy for well, it's easy for me to say. Just don't. And I think I, I had a conversation the other day with somebody who's struggling with that. And mm-hmm. like people, I think they look for like, but how do I not check? But how do I not check? You just don't check. Yeah. yeah. So I I've never had an addiction problem either. But I've heard people describe that addiction thing like mm-hmm. you're addicted to something, whether it's alcohol or some sort of substance, every time you have that urge to reach for it, you must deal with it at that moment and not do it. And then you might have to do it again in 10 seconds and then again yeah, yeah. in 10 seconds and again in 10 seconds. Like, I, I just don't know any other way around that. You just you just have to just tackle well, every I, urge as it comes. Yeah, yeah, because I have an addictive personality, Netflix, PlayStation. But I used to well, like, also I'd take my temperature but it'd make no freaking difference if it was up or down like it's just it's just those little things but they can send you into a spiral that's the point like you might not feel that bad when you do it but when you when you see like if you're checking your heart rate all the time and it's up a bit it's going to make you feel worse whereas if you just don't check it you don't know in an hour's time you're going to be alive still so what was the point I, I know that, you know, the health anxiety thing, I've seen it described. Health anxiety is a lot of OCD involved in that, right? Yeah, checking, yeah, yeah. checking, checking, uh-huh. checking, checking, and intrusive, obsessive thoughts. Uh-huh. Somebody posted the other day that they're completely obsessed with, with fear of cancer. I mean, we're all afraid of getting cancer. That's, that's, a, that's mm-hmm. not a good thing when it happens, right? But I don't even but, like saying but, the word. Yes, I, and a lot of people do. It makes a lot of people yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. Like people who don't have a health anxiety don't want to say the word. I understand. Mm-hmm. It's very, it is a frightening thing. But there's like, I don't want to get that. And I don't want anybody that I know or, or care about to get that, of course. Yeah, of course. But, but there is absolutely no evidence anywhere in my life that I have that. Mm-hmm. Nothing says I have that. Mm-hmm. Yet some people will literally fixate on that. Like, well, yeah, what yeah. if I get it? But what if I get it? Well, and that's that, like, well, what if I get hit by a bus or what if I get hit by lightning or, or anything yeah. can happen? Mm-hmm. But right now, so I think health anxiety, like living in the now and being mindful and trying to stay in the present moment, because health anxiety is almost entirely, entirely like an irrational prediction of the future. Mm-hmm. Like, what if this happens? It is entirely a what if I must find out so I can protect myself against what I think might happen, even though there's no indication that it will. Mm-hmm. And it never has. I'm just going to keep going. But but the uh, OCD, I've seen one of the best things I ever saw about OCD, which is a health anxiety thing. That's the health anxiety thing is is attacking that underlying anxiety that fuels fuels it. So those compulsions mm-hmm. are fueled by the anxiety. So uh, it seems to be that people who feel more generally competent and confident, like right now you're feeling much more competent and confident mm-hmm. than you were, say, six months ago. Yeah, yeah. You are more immune now to those things. So if you felt like, oh, you are literally addicting yourself to Netflix and Homeland, you could probably just stop today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something. It's not. A, it's not well, a real look, addiction. I, I gave up. Yeah, I gave up yeah. smoking. I gave up smoking right. weed. I gave up drinking. Gave up caffeine. So right. All these things can be done. I think the the thing for me on this, like, I've got a hard line approach on the health anxiety because, yeah. like you say, that you've never really dealt with it, but. Like stopping doing those things is what stopped me obsessing about having these things. So right. that I'm speaking from experience when I say like that is why I don't obsess about cancer or freaking heart failure or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. It's because I just don't engage in what my mind is trying to tell me. Like I've got a dodgy stomach now. That's it. End of right. story. That's it. Statement of fact. It, no it will clear. It will clear up. If it doesn't, right. I'll go and see the doctor whenever. Like I ain't yeah. fucking bothered. <laughs> Whatever. And you're right, because there's probably like fifty thousand people in a in a exactly. hundred mile radius of you that have a dodgy stomach this morning. Yeah, like, yeah. If I went on Facebook now and scrolled down my timeline, I could probably find ten posts from people that have got something something flu or a cold on. or a dodgy right. stomach or whatever. Yeah. So That's that it. is I think that is excellent, excellent advice. In the end, it comes down to just each urge as you get it. 
you need to Google right now, don't Google. If you feel like you need to Google mm -hmm. again in 15 seconds, don't Google. Just break mm -hmm. it down into each individual urge and get past it. And then when the next one comes, it comes. But it's a, it's a repetition thing like anything else. Okay. Repetition, repetition, repetition. I wanted to check. I didn't check. I was fine. I wanted mm -hmm. to check. I didn't check. I was fine. Sooner that's or later. Exactly yeah, yeah, right? that's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sooner or later, your brain will understand that I, you do not need to Google to be okay. Mm -hmm. like, you'll be okay. Yeah, and yeah. I think trying to stay happy for today, and we'll, we'll move on to some more questions, but like at the moment, even though you may have a little bit of an upset stomach this morning, or like my nose, oh. like I, it feels like I'm getting sick again, which I'm mm -hmm. pissed off at, but like, what am I going to do? Like it just is what it is what it is. But I'm I'm yeah, upright. Yeah. I'm breathing. I'm talking to my friend. I'm like uh -huh. I'm living my life. Every like I'm, exactly. I, I'm happy for that part as opposed to being fixated on like, oh my God, why does my nose feel stuffy and why mm -hmm. you know what does this mean? So there you go, health anxiety, and there's probably more questions about that. Hopefully we've helped. So our friend from Remedia, Kat. Hey Bill, how about drugs of choice while dealing with anxiety? Um he's asked this several times, Kat. Right, like alcohol, mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes to take the edge off after a day, bad anxiety habits mostly. I, I've I've said this. I'm brutal on that. Like, don't. Why? Why? I mean, I understand people self-medicate. It's the thing. Uh, we're having lag again. There you go. You're back. I, Bit I, of editing to know, do here? We're going to have a little bit of editing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely have some lag from time to time. Let's see. We're good. Are we good? You're all chopping <laughs> yeah, yeah. me, but that's all right. All right. Uh, so um, so uh, to we'll, answer. We'll live we'll with it. All right. That's fine. So to answer, Kat, that's an ASMR sound. Oh, really? Yeah. You should start an ASMR vaping channel. You are not the first person that said that. The, the ASMR sound? I don't know why. Like <laughs> We had a big discussion about ASMR a while ago, and for some reason that was like, yeah, hey, yeah. That's a, that, that would be a sound. Um, Give it. So drugs of choice, like self-medicating drugs of choice. Can. I prefer heroin. I, I prefer heroin. It's... Crystal, crystal meth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all good, but my friend Heisenberg. Just don't get it from dodgy Frank off the corner, you know. Yeah, no, you got it. Like, yeah, oh, I just walked past, right? <laughs> I think it was Do dodgy Francis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this question has come up before, especially if there's medication involved. Like you do not want to mix alcohol and and your benzos and I I don't know drugs of choice. I, I don't know how to answer that. It's those are safe. They're you're self medicating. They're safety behaviors. They're safety rituals. I have to smoke a cigarette to calm down. Mm -hmm. These are none of those things are helping. None. Definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. So if you feel like, you, but that's you not to, to say. Like, because I I stopped drinking and I stopped smoking, but it didn't yeah. make it didn't make any difference to my anxiety at all. Right, right. Who's outside? I don't uh, know. I there might be some some drug deals going down in the mean oh, streets shit. of it's you filthy are. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. It didn't make it like because I think a lot of people think that like um I'll give up ca caffeine, it's going to cure my anxiety, or I'll give up yeah. smoking, it's going to cure my anxiety. No, it's just better for you. Like, why not? Like, right, right. Don't be healthy. Don't take drugs. Don't take drugs. It's not yeah. a good idea. Yeah, just it's, it's just good advice, whether you're anxious or not, to not drink yeah, yeah. too much and not uh -huh. do those things and not smoke. But I think recognizing that in an anxiety context, if you need to go home and drink to calm down, you're self medicating. Uh -huh. it, yeah, yeah. It's an it's an avoidance and escape behavior, and it's actually making things worse for you. And the same thing mm -hmm. with cigarettes. If you feel like every time you feel like you get anxious, you have to have a cigarette. Well, first of all, you're inhaling all that crap, and that's not good for you. Mm -hmm. And second of all, again, it's an avoidance or safety behavior. We well, yeah, are on the vape. Yes, get on the vape if you have to. At least it's less tar and stuff. I need to get lungs. like a. I need to get an affiliate, like a vape affiliate. So <laughs> you I can do. Use you the code. Yeah, <laughs> use the code. <laughs> vape UK is the code today. Yes, but. I, I think in the end, the answer to that is like drugs. Are, you already know, Kat, you already know what it is. You're asking already. Like, you know mm -hmm. that you're self medicating. You know these are bad habits. Mm -hmm. Although, look, smoking, you, I, I understand. I've never smoked, but it is so, I know so many people who cannot, so anxious or not, it's just yeah, so yeah. addictive. So uh -huh. I get it. I get it. But just, you know, try not to engage in those safety behaviors, I think. They, they don't help. They're prolonging things. 
those cravings that you have for the cigarettes will be the same cravings you have to reach for the blood pressure monitor or the yes. thermometer. You yeah. Know, it's the yeah. same principle again. Just That's true. No. It satisfies. Well, there's a physical dependence on on this on the nicotine to a certain extent yeah. that's true i mean i know it's not a not a hard nobody winds up you yeah know, i mean i didn't yeah like people talk about it a lot it. yeah no i didn't do any of that i just yeah i don't know because I, I was off nicotine for a week like when it yeah. first died i didn't vape or anything i just went cold turkey on it and it's the same with the weed no nah, nothing like that yeah no nope. same with the weed that's like right. i was sm- i was smoking weed for 10 years yeah. every day breakfast wow lunch and dinner yeah the weed that, diet that just weed and complete like i just stopped cold turkey never touched it again nothing totally fine yeah yeah so it can be yeah. well i wouldn't wouldn't go that far but yeah no, i get it like, i get it yeah yeah yeah, but... yeah no no issues with it like i didn't even i didn't really think about it and that but i think for me it was more it was like a psychological reason for quitting like i had yeah. to quit because it was making me feel worse so right. that made it easier i guess i don't know yeah it makes sense bad habits you got to try and break them it is what it is like yep. and some could be really difficult i get it just a physical mm-hmm. dependency but but the smoking thing is is more of a habit i think i, I yeah I, yeah I, that, that, that's yeah that's what i learned from it i think so yeah so let's talk about uh, Muhammad. Please advise on disturbing ex- existential thoughts during recovery. And, and Marines ask the same question. Okay. I, I I went through that for sure. Like when when I was so scrambled exis- eggs. Existential meaning like what is the meaning of life and what, what am is I the doing point here? Of all this. What am yeah, I doing yeah. here? Well, you know, like, and I don't even want to say some of the things because I know that people don't even want to hear them. Yeah. So there's one particular person I know will listen that like, don't say like, there was one phrase, what's the point? And it was, it mm-hmm. became a joke. Like, don't say that. Now I'm going to have to go think about like, have an existential crisis for 23 minutes, you know, like, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And I, but I think that's so normal. Like I went through a lot of that. I don't know if you ever experienced yeah. it. Yeah. Not really. I don't know. I, used, I don't know. I used to, well, I put it to you this way. I used to worry about it all the time. Like there were times when I was at my worst, mm-hmm. I would have like a lot of those ex, like whatever existential crisis type fears that would send me yeah, into yeah. a panic. Sometimes. You know, what's the point? What, or what am I, why am I here? Who am I? Blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. I would like, you know, we're all just that sort of stuff. But what happened was as everything else got better, those started to go away. Yeah, so, yeah. I can still ponder those questions because they're questions that normal people. I think, you know, yeah, that that's the different. Like, I, I've had those thoughts before, but I don't sure. class those. It's not a crisis; it's just a question no, in, it's in a my question. head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we all we all confront those questions. You know, yeah, human yeah, beings yeah. like, who am I? Why am I here? What's the point? What's what's this all about? It just doesn't have to turn into like fear and panic and anxiety. Yeah, yeah, that's so what, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Like, it doesn't worry me if I think that. It doesn't worry me. I just just yeah. a question. Yeah, and I, what's so strange is, like, at my worst, I would think, um, you know, th- those existential things, they're unavoidable. Like, we yeah, all yeah. we all face an unavoidable thing in our life, and we all know what it is. Mm-hmm. But but I think, like, now, it, that would send me into just a complete tailspin, just that mm-hmm. thought. And knowing yeah, yeah. there's nothing I could do about this. There's nothing I could do about it. Now it's like, well, yeah, there's nothing I could do about it, but... All right, mm-hmm. like we all seven billion of us know this, and like we're not all See, crippled by it. I think I know the reason it's because, like, I'm going back to weed here, but those yeah. are the kind of conversations you used to have smoking weed. So yeah, they were yeah. the fun. That that was like, let's go on a freaking journey, a mind yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Like, let's discuss this shit. So maybe that's why it doesn't bother me now because I spent like ten years just going off on those, and it weren't a crisis. It was. Like, let's have a freaking laugh about it. It was fun. Yeah, right. right. So smoke, smoke weed. That's the end. There answer. you go. So let, let's contradict what <laughs> we just said and just start smoking <laughs> copious amounts of weed for breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. I'm so sorry. I'm but so but sorry. I think, guys, to answer the question about existential, disturbing existential thoughts, like almost every thought when you're when you're in that real sensitized, like, raw state and you're panicking mm-hmm. all the time, you're working on it, just understand that if that thought disturbs you, it's okay. Don't judge yeah, that. Yeah. It, many thoughts will disturb you. Try and mm-hmm. move on the best you can. You don't have to think about those things right now. And as you get, mm-hmm. as things get better, those thoughts can come and not be disturbing. They could just be the same 
questions we all ask from time to time about life and yeah, it'll yeah. be okay. It'll be okay. So, um, let's well, talk to Mark. You yeah, Mark. That. I, I did, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd like you to discuss safety behaviors, how they affect us, good or bad. Never good, by the way. I'll answer that already. If you have health anxiety around your heart and are overweight and struggling to exercise, says that's Mark. Um, safety behaviors, how they affect us, good or bad. Always bad. Always yeah, bad. always bad in the long run. In the long run. And, and they're not. The safety behaviors aren't horrible things. Carrying around a bottle. Look, I still look. I bought a giant, ridiculous, like gallon of water to drink yesterday because I was thirsty and I didn't have water because, with me. Yeah, anymore. because you needed a drink. Right. I was just thirsty. I usually yeah, have yeah. water with me right now because I get thirsty. So, but it used to be that I needed that water like to feel like, oh God, if I don't have water, I'm screwed. Like I'm, that was a panic we, safety thing. Yeah, because we we sort of touched on it last week when when I went for the walk and I got to the car park and realized I'd forgot my water. Yeah. So. If that would, if that was to cause you a problem, then that is a safety behavior. Whereas, right. like I thought, I thought to myself, oh, I forgot my water, but it didn't make any difference. Like that's, that's it's fine. fine. I wanted right. water because I might need a drink. That's the only right. reason. But I mean, people I, are, I, we could go on forever listing safety behaviors like taking your there, phone, checking stuff, and yeah, gum, yeah. Mints. mints. Like I still, I all, I always take mints with me wherever I go. Still, yeah, me too. No, me too. Because I, well, because I just. I always have them in the car, but they yeah, don't yeah. serve a purpose other than like, uh, you know, I don't, I just want to have peppermint breath because I just, yeah, don't, yeah. I'm always uh -huh. nervous about that, you know, it's never a problem, but I'm just yeah, trying yeah. to be polite. Like, so, uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I always have mints with me, but so most safety behaviors, when I say they're bad, I don't mean they're horrible behaviors. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. They're not. And, and if, if you just did them outside of the anxiety context, no one would ever think of it. You wouldn't even give them a second thought. Yeah, I like yeah. I like water and I, I usually have mints in my car. Okay, so what? <laughs> um, some people like to paint or color because they like to. Yeah, Other yeah. people, you know, have to run to the coloring book when they panic because if they'll put it to you this way, safety behavior is if you have behaviors or rituals that you go to the minute you start to feel badly because you think you, they will let you back out of that bad feeling. Mm -hmm. then that, that's a safety behavior. And we talk yeah, yeah. all the time about just allowing the bad feelings to come. And you, the only way to truly get through this is to go through those bad feelings without doing a damn thing. That's so it. it's the only way to like actually on the long term be inoculated against that fear. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, oh, here I am going to panic. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll yeah. be over in 10 minutes. It's fine. So the safety behaviors, I think, are never – they're never good. You have to try to under, know what they are and then extinguish them as best you can one by one, mm -hmm. which means facing your shit, the, the worst fear. It means facing your fear. So here's a question because I often think about this. Like doing – when you're starting out with your exposure stuff, what's your yeah. thoughts on – your thoughts on like taking your water and having some safety? Would you rather people get out – with a yes. few safeties than not get out at all. Yes, that's a super yeah, yeah. good question. And I think the answer is sure. I, I think it, it, to me, it's like uh, the debate that people have about using medication. Like uh, what if yeah, I yeah. use, you know, tranquilizer so I could start doing my exposure? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think that bottle of water or mints or the rubber band on your wrist, or whatever it is you use, is certainly a better option than popping a Xanax or a Valium or yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. something that ends in Zam, Alprazolam or whatever you got. Mm -hmm. um, because it won't take your symptoms away, whereas the meds will take your symptoms away. And then what are you exposed to? You, you need to feel the symptoms. But if it's a choice of sitting on your sofa or going out with a bottle of water, go out with it. Go out with water. the bottle of water. That's exactly right. Yeah, and I yeah. think what will happen is you'll discover what I would say is bring the water, bring the mints, bring the rubber band, bring your phone, do all of those things. But you have to work on at first. You're going to look at it as I, I must bring my phone because yeah, yeah. if I get in trouble, I can call mm -hmm. for help. Mm -hmm. and, and and you might succumb and call for help. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's okay, but you have to understand, like, well, I called for help, and I didn't really need to call for help. So mm -hmm. the object of the game is bring those things with you, and at first you'll see them as safety or escape patches, but you have to bring them with you when you're walking out the door and say, okay, I, do, I really don't need these. I'll bring them anyway, but just yeah, remind yeah. yourself, these are not escape patches because I don't need one. I, I, I don't need to be saved. Yeah, but I'll bring yeah. these for now. And then over time, I think most of us will describe that like those fell off. Like, oh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I you just I don't need my you, water. I don't need my meds. You perhaps, I don't need my pills. You perhaps notice that you're not actually using the stuff. Like, you'll go right. for a walk and not take a drink, and then you'll get to the point where you forget to take it, and that yep. might trigger a bit of anxiety, but you'll still get through it. 
Yeah. And then it yeah. just becomes like, you don't need to take anything. You want to take something. Correct. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I think by all means, that's fine. Bring all that stuff with you or like, it's okay. Better to start with those things than to never start. I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm good. And they'll naturally start to fall off over time, right? Yeah. So I think it's pretty normal. Uh, Mark also asked about what if you have health anxiety around your heart and are overweight and struggling to exercise? I mean, that's it's that's sort of its own <laughs> thing. I think there's a few questions on exercise. Oh, is there? Yeah. Back to that. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we, we can come back to the exercise thing. So what about uh, Ben, um, one of the anxious men, which is so funny when you met Bill and Ben. I did not understand the reference. The yeah, yeah. Educated, old UK TV. Yeah. Um, seemed to get stressed very easily with my small children, especially at bedtime, and carrying that stress into the next day. How can I become more relaxed with my kids without letting them get away with things? It's like a parenting question. Oh, then there are seven, like, yeah, let's yeah, see. Yeah, it stirred up some interest, that one. I see that. I lose my temper so quickly. It's not good. It makes me feel worse. Um, Jolene, I try to use my child in my parenting as a form of meditation. Jolene, you rock. That's that's an excellent, excellent thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking my time and thinking, very good, very good. I'll say something like tomorrow I'll be more present, giving yourself a hard time. Uh, Jolene answered the question. Yeah, Jolene, yeah, yeah, I see. that yeah. was really, really, really good. Your answer is absolutely excellent. Nailed I think it. she totally nailed it. And I would say I can't add to Jolene's thing. She's absolutely right. Yeah, so yeah. number one, understand that you are in a sensitized state, that you're on a hair trigger, that you're working on things, but so many things trigger panic. You have a very low tolerance for stress. You have a very low tolerance sometimes for any sort of stimulus at all. And and mm-hmm. certainly kids, especially little kids, can be a huge stimulus. Yeah, so yeah. just just understand like – expect that to happen don't judge it badly it's like this is just the way it is for now and as i work on my stuff i will get better at this again Mm -hmm. and i think just keep your focus it's that stress thing that we were talking about in the beginning yeah yeah. so when your kids are acting up and they're little and they're they're causing a ruckus you're trying to get them to bed and get pajamas on and do all that stuff and you're you're just freaking out keep your focus on them like be present with them you know, what can I do to help Sally, Sally, who's named Sally anymore? What can I do to help, you know, whoever, my daughter, you know, get <laughs> in the bath and get in the all the, all the Sallies know. who are listening, but it's a very, that's an old name, right? And you're uh, always offending someone, aren't you? I am. I am. It's, it's good. So the, uh, yeah, focus on them, the problem at hand. What are my kids doing right now? Not mm-hmm. what are my kids doing that is making me feel so badly. So look at it as a good practice of like maintaining your focus on the world and what's going on and what you need to engage in as opposed to like, oh, they're screaming again. Let me turn my focus back to me, 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 me. And I don't mean that yeah, yeah. in a mocking way, but mm-hmm. we, we have to acknowledge that so much of this problem is because of me, 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 me. And I, and I don't mean – selfish me 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 like just it's all about me nobody thinks yeah, that yeah. Uh-huh. but it's how we act like how are these kids making me feel well they're not making you f- they're you know they're, they're doing, doing their they thing do. right yeah, yeah. they're doing how did this somehow become like really when you get down to brass tacks because i've been there when mm-hmm. i was at my worst my kids were little like it was difficult and i mm-hmm. i remember thinking one night like man what the hell what am i doing like, how did this become – like, my daughter was – my younger daughter, I remember she had a big meltdown one night, huge meltdown. She was like four, you know? Like, she was exhausted. It was a super long day. There was too much – that's what kids do. So – and I remember th- I ran out of the room, and I was so, like, just amped up, and I was feeling like I was going to panic. And I remember standing, like, stuck my head out the window to just, like, get a breath of air and had to say to myself, like, what the hell am I doing? Like – she has had a long day. She's only four. She doesn't have like resiliency. She doesn't have coping skills yeah, yeah. yet. She's learning how to be a human being. This was her long day that has culminated in this, in her being stressed. And she's releasing the stress the way she knows how. My yeah, job yeah. is to help her channel that, teach her, like comfort her. Like, why is this about me? And I remember mm-hmm. slamming the window shut and going back in and talking to her. I'm like, this yeah, has yeah. nothing to do with me. Why is this suddenly about me? Mm-hmm. So does that make any sense? Does that resonate yeah, at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So it's nothing to do is. with me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's them you know, that have got the friggin' issue. Help right. them. Help yeah, yeah. them. Like that. That's and so look at it as an opportunity to maintain. Put your focus where it's supposed to be, as opposed to like how I feel. Yeah. And yeah. I'm I'm saying that in a mocking tone because that's the reality. It's like I was always like, oh, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? Uh-huh. Well, fuck that. Like it's not about how I feel. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That's my answer to that. Want to add any? Add anything? 
par- yeah, parenting daughter, tips. My daughter just messaged me from upstairs. <laughs> oh, kids. Stress. Do you, <laughs> she, am I doing this? Nope. Nope. She's Keep the door closed. Stay up there. there. Stressing me out. She's stressed. <laughs> right now. You know what she's doing right now? She's doing a podcast about what do you do when your parents stress you out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about Heather, Heather, our friend, Heather, I have a question. Why dear people, I have a question. I have a query. Why are we so scared of medicine, working out, trying new foods, driving, but we're fine with drinking alcohol, smoking, vaping. It's a super good question. It's a super good question. Um, because we are, well, why are we so scared of all those things? Because anything that might make you feel different when you are obsessed with how you feel is going to be a problem. That's the short answer to that. Yeah, yeah. If you are constantly focused on every every moment on how you feel, every change in your body, every twitch, every twinge, every pain, every sensation, every tingle, every thought that goes in your head, then yeah. anything that you ingest or do that might change that state is going to be scary to you. Agree. That's why we're afraid of that. But why are we not scared of alcohol and smoking? Because – we th- we use those things to knock down how we feel. Yeah, we we don't associate those things with like well, they're right. completely different to a medication. Like yeah. I don't know, it's yeah. a it's a mad like the question. I've never really thought about it because I'm scared it's... of like I don't take ibuprofen. I don't know yeah. why. Heather said that I had yeah, a yeah. bit of a meltdown taking ibuprofen, but I'm yeah, vaping yeah. over here like I'm Billy. <laughs> so like you know. She's... <laughs> Because honestly, we're, you're afraid of anything that you think might make you feel worse, but you'll run mm-hmm. toward the things that you think will make you feel better. That's it's the safety. It's the safety thing. It's again, a safety it? thing. You run toward safety and you hide from what you feel is not safe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that has got to be the thumbnail right there. <laughs> Should we get one? <laughs> there you There's go. Your thumb. <laughs> Carry on. There's your thumbnail. So that's why I think. I can usually do, I can kill five milliliter tanks. Oh, wow. Okay. Heather can vape like crazy. Um, no kidding, right? Slow down on the vaping. Slow down on the vaping, my friend. Yeah. So that's the short answer to that question. We run toward what we think is safety, even though it's wrong. Yeah, and yeah, we run mad. away from the things we feel are unsafe, even though that's wrong. Yeah, so yeah. It's mm-hmm. all about being obsessed with how you feel. All right, next, Christina in Sydney um, in Australia. I'd like to know on average, that's my Aussie accent, by the way, cool. how long how long relative success cool, takes. Cool, mate. Should be right. Um, it would also be great to have an idea when most people consider themselves recovered. So basically how long? Like, Sorry, I weren't listening. So Christina <laughs> asked like, basically. It was just everything. Just it was just worried, Australian. Worried about the Australian head. accent. <laughs> you just <laughs> coming up with all the Aussie white. sayings. Fucking <laughs> white. Should be right. Cool. <laughs> Damn book. Oh, never mind. From the top. Um, she's basically asking how long how long success takes, relatively speaking. Like right. it would be great to have an idea when most people consider themselves recovered. What defines recovered? You know, it's different for everybody, blah, blah, mm. blah. And can someone be see, too far gone? Uh, no, the answer is no. You cannot no. be too far never. gone. Never. N- never. Never. You can never be too never, far gone. Mate. Fucking never, mate. Right. <laughs> so um no, you can't be too far gone, Christina. Like there's no such thing. That's the understanding that this an anxiety disorder is a neurosis, like in that traditional like psychological sense, whereas the word it's not a psychosis like you ha- mm-hmm. you're not mentally ill, broken with reality problems like yeah, yeah. you're just bad mental bad cognitive habits. Nobody is too far gone. Nobody. So and how when did you think like like when did I all right? So when did I think I was recovered for me? I would say I was living like. 75 percent of like a normal life within Mm -hmm. six months Mm -hmm. less maybe then the other 25 percent like now i would say yeah i live 100 percent normal life like i do whatever i want doesn't matter Mm -hmm. um so when did i consider myself fully recovered when i no longer made decisions based on uh uh-oh there was never an uh uh-oh and never Mm -hmm. a "Mm, what if i how am I going to feel when I do that? Is this going to be too hard? When I stopped questioning if I could do things, that's when yeah, I knew yeah, I was yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, you don't you don't question certain things anymore that you just do, right? It's true. I've, I was going to talk about, like, small victories because I think it's sort of related to Gemma's comment that's on there. But okay. it's like when you do stuff and, like, because – wait, I don't know where I'm going with this. That's <laughs> like okay. Going, going to the shop at first for me was a major thing and then yeah. – 
like it escalated to walking around the castle grounds, like being away from the car, going to Birmingham, like to the blue shop, stuff like that. And right. then you forget about the little things that you're still in achieving. And you yeah, like when you start to question whether you're still moving forward, but then you've just like I had my hair cut Friday and like that hasn't registered in my head as a little victory anymore because the victories have become bigger. Yeah. So you start you start to forget that those little things too are still victories. Like I couldn't fucking do that six months ago. So yeah. you need to like remember that just because you like you can do the stuff that's smaller now that's easy. That yeah. wasn't easy. That wasn't easy at one point. So it's still a victory. I think that's something that people lose sight of. It's like the victories have to become bigger and more yeah. elaborate when they don't really. No. And I, I think the, also the concept of like, well, I have to get to this place called recovered. Like recovered yeah, yeah. isn't isn't a. This is gonna sound so cliche. Recovered mm-hmm. isn't like an actual destination. Like, oh, I mm-hmm. made it to this place called recovered. Like yeah, sooner yeah. or later, you'll say like, oh, I'm a hundred percent. Like I will. I would tell anybody, yes, I'm a hundred percent recovered. Mm-hmm. But like every day, you're more recovered than the day before. Yeah, yeah. Like you, it, it, recovery is on a sliding scale, and like it's a matter of degree to a certain extent. So every day you are more recovered than the next day. It's like trying to lose weight or gain weight. Uh-huh. Like if you go on a diet and you're doing well and you're exercising every day, you weigh maybe ounces less, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you are thinner th- that day or you're lighter that day than you were the day before. And so recovery yeah, yeah. is the same way. You are recovering. You are recovered. So now, like in terms of frame it in terms of those tasks, like in terms of getting your hair cut, you're you're recovered. Hundred percent. You just went and did it. You didn't even think yeah, about yeah. it. There you go. Like, no, it's horrible. Yeah. I still wobbled, like sitting in the chair. It was horrible. Yeah, but but you did same, it. Yeah, same as it would have been six months ago if I'd have gone and done it. Like it was no yeah. different. It's just my response to it is different. Like I didn't move. I didn't start yeah. freaking and start questioning how how am I going to get through this. I just sat there and got through this. Yeah. So, so I would think to, to relate that to what Christine is asking and Gemma was the next one too, like getting back up after you feel the failure, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like everything is ruined kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's not a, like, even though you felt the same way on Friday, getting your hair cut as you used to six months ago, you are still more recovered in relation to that task than you were. Yeah. 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 Because you just, you 100%. just did it and, and you'll yeah, do it again, yeah. you mm-hmm. know? And unfortunately, that's not something you could do every day because you just don't. Your hair doesn't grow that fast. But yeah, well, every time, time where I do don't it, need a haircut, <laughs> <laughs> well, you better get the practice in now. Then you still need it. But yeah. I was in that same boat. Like I can remember very. It's you know, it's so funny that you bring that up. So I was driving yesterday, the day before, whatever, just on a, a road that I drive on all the time, and mm-hmm. and that memory came up driving down that road to go get my haircut. Like right, it was a huge issue mm-hmm. and, and at the time i used to have to drive down this road to where i used to get my haircut and i remember for some reason that popped into my head and i i laughed and i yeah. remember just shaking and all, you know doing all the thing i have to get there now i'm here and i have to sit here and wait like oh god yeah. I'll just wait how long is it going to take mm-hmm. uh, now like it's not even a thing i don't even think about it I just go get my, my haircut yeah, yeah yeah it's crazy so that's so that's recovery so that's the that's complete i would say complete recovery but mm-hmm. every day you've got more recovery than you did the day before. So mm-hmm. even Christina, even if you're having just a hard time driving down the block, the fact that you get in the car when you couldn't get in the car uh, two weeks ago yeah, is yeah. recovery. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're always recovering. It's fine. How long did it take for me? Eh, six months to get to like 75% recovery. Mm-hmm. And then the other stuff took much longer because then I had to hit things that I just didn't need to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I would have to manufacture like a reason to, go a hundred miles away, which mm-hmm. is a little bit inconvenient. So yeah, yeah. 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 But that's, that's how that worked out. Hopefully that makes sense. And does that answer Gemma's question too? Like everything is ruined. Everything is certainly not ruined. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. It's your, your perception of the moment, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also not ruined. So think about a time when, How's the best way to frame this? So let's say you're starting from square one to a certain extent. Like, I can't even leave the house. Mm-hmm. Or like, this is crazy. But you're forced to. You must go and do some task. And you go and do it. And you rush back home. And you have a panic attack while you're out. And you run home. And you close the door. And all you could think about is, that was terrible. That was terrible. I hate that. I hate that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. And you just go back to hiding. Like, mm-hmm. now... You say, okay, I'm going to go shopping or whatever I need to do. And you go out and maybe you have a panic attack of a really like anxious day, shaky. Like maybe it's hard. You engage in your safety behaviors. Mm -hmm. 
but you did it. And you, and your thought process in that situation is like, okay, this didn't go the way I want it to, because I want to be able to do this. You're not thinking, let me just get home and hide anymore. So that is not failure. It's not to me. Like mm -hmm. if you know, like you did this thing and like, Oh God. Um, if you know that you did this thing and it didn't turn out the way you want, you are already ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. Does that make any sense? A little. Because your your mindset is different. Remember, yeah, yeah. remember a day when you were just like, I just need to get this over with and get back home to my so yeah. I don't have to do it again. If you're if you're knowing like, well, I want this to be a certain way. I would like to go to the supermarket now and be able to shop without going into a panic. And well, today I panicked. I don't like mm -hmm. that, but I'm going to do it again. And I know what yeah, I did yeah, wrong. Yeah. You know, I think as long as you know what you did wrong, you're able to confront that, be honest with yourself, and then say, well, I'm going to do this again right away. Try mm -hmm. it again. Practice yeah, this again. Yeah, yeah. Then it's not a failure. Mm -hmm. It's only a failure if you deem it a failure and decide, I can't do this, and just mm -hmm. don't do it again for two months. Then you, then it's a failure. I will call it a failure. You're a busy street today, man. There's a lot going on. Man, so it's much up. activity. Is some sort of party going on that you weren't invited to? What's up with that? There's going to be 100,000 people out there called Sally. That's what I know it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> 100,000 Sally's all yeah. converging. Yeah, yeah, wow. It might be more common in the UK. Good. They can protest outside your house. Great. Not too shabby. So let's move on. Hello, Billy. I have a question. Lou. Hello. Uh, hey, Lou. About a week ago, I went with the float with the panic attack. Lasted only 30 seconds. Ever since then, no panic attacks. It's super nice. However, four days ago, I have been struggling to sleep at night because of these intense symptoms. Sharp pain on my arms and legs, blah, blah, blah. Warm, tingly. I'm not even going to go through them. Intense fear that my heart will give up or have stroke. It's hard to sleep. I still get no panic attacks. Um, it's just a fear. This is a long comment. I'm trying to get through it. I feel like with no panics, I'm starting to move forward. But with this intense symptoms and deprivation of sleep, it's making taking me step back. Very strange. All right. Um, so Lou is having an issue where she's feeling anxiety symptoms at night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, we had the we had the morning anxiety last week, didn't we? Right, right, we did. And so now Lou is saying that you know she's she figured out the floating thing, and that's good. She hasn't had panic during the day for a while, which is mm -hmm. is good. You've made us definitely made a step forward. So now just move that practice to the night. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do the same thing with these sensations and this fear. So you're describing Lou. You're describing this long list of things about how your arms get warm and tingly, and and you're afraid of your heart and having a stroke and your heart giving out, but it isn't happening. So mm -hmm. now, now you practice at night. Yeah, as they're, opposed, they're probably the, the all... same fears that she was having during the day, but yeah. managed to get over them. So yeah, same principles. But I think so sleep, it's... like sleep, she's saying sleep deprivation, like it, right, get more sleep. But, so that's interesting because well... like this week has been the first week back for the kids at school. So I've been trying to get back into some kind of normal sleep pattern. So yeah. I've noticed like this week has been, it has been a struggle. Because I'm getting up at like 7 a.m. in the morning. I've been struggling to sleep. So okay. it's been hard. And I've definitely felt different. And I've noticed like I've been feeling way more sensations anxiety wise than that. Okay. But Because of the sleep issue. Well, issue I, would Im I would imagine that that's what yeah. it is. I mean, yeah. it might not be. It might be. I might have a bug. Who knows? But I'm not Googling it. <laughs> right it doesn't matter <laughs> no that yeah. was just smart I anyway, was so you're right Lou, Lou was saying that well this is also interfering with her ability to sleep because it's happening at yeah, night yeah. but I think so just resign yourself to the fact that like okay you're gonna have to deal with this now at night mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you feel those sensations you go through the drill the same thing relax yeah, your yeah. body slow down put your brain in neutral put your focus where you want it to be as opposed mm -hmm. to on your thoughts and sensations put it on your breath just keep mm -hmm. doing it again 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 and you have to learn to float through those sensations and those thoughts, even if they happen at 2 a.m. while you're in bed. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're not going to sleep. That might happen. But yeah, yeah. just it, it is what it is. Like that's – and you'll make progress. So if you keep mm -hmm. not reacting to those symptoms when they happen at night, sooner or later, you will not be afraid of them. And when you feel them, 30 seconds later, you won't care and you'll roll over and go to bed. Yep. So you might – you might have to work on that at night for, you know, a week or two. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And then sleep, sleep when you can. So I think the short answer to that is you do the same thing you would do any other time you get those symptoms and just understand that it might be a little disruptive to sleep right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Don't make more of it than it has to be. Makes sense? Yeah. Cool. We've got a lag. A little lag again. Nah, don't worry about it. Who cares about it? We have an expert editor in the house here. Yeah, Whenever well. there's lag, just insert, like... 
car chase scenes from old movies and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Confuse people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's let's talk about um, Jasmine says exercise intolerance. How to build up fitness when exercises increase increases the fatigue so much. Um, okay, so there's a follow up that was different, but let's see. So let's talk about Jasmine. So exercise intolerance. It's a good question, but you've done videos on this before like i actually have done two is, videos yeah yeah, yeah. two videos specifically addressing that and honestly but jasmine's talking about fatigue i think more than anything else so i think yeah yeah that's that a lot of people this is the heart rate and it makes you out of breath brings on those sensations but i can relate to what she's saying about the feeling after exercise so i can go on like the elliptical for 10 minutes or whatever and i'm absolutely fine doing it but when i right. stop that's when I start freaking like my legs. That's when I'd yeah. be conscious of how I feel. And I'd come and sit on the sofa and like just sitting on the sofa afterwards when you feel there's <laughs> you got something in your eye. I got something in my eye. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. it's I okay. thought that was a new, new exercise you'd brought. No, in. no, the I actually, will... you yeah, know, I got just something tone... in my eye about a minute ago. So sorry. That was probably very obvious. That's okay. Um, it's okay. So yeah, it was just that feeling of just like being worn out after. But then when you've got a reason to feel worn out, like you should just, you should feel good about that fatigue, I guess. Yeah. Like that would be the, you've achieved something. Well, and I think that's just an understanding of like reality is what it is. So if you've been yeah, yeah. sedentary and, and homebound and not getting out and not moving, mm-hmm. then any little bit of exercise is going to be fatiguing. That's okay. So yeah, yeah. you have to, you know, how do you build up fitness when exercises increases the fatigue? You exercise and then you rest because yeah, you're tired. Slowly. Yeah, right. slowly. Yeah, and that's how you do it. So, you know, one day you can walk on the treadmill for five minutes and the next day you might do six and the next day you might do seven mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then like, over time, you accept that fatigue will be part of that deal. You don't overthink it. You don't panic because of it. You float through it and you just keep going. Small that, increments. Right, small increments. And it will matter. So like Jasmine, if you just keep doing it, like you might feel badly because it's making you so tired, but mm-hmm. that's just because you're out of shape and just – you can, you know, it's okay. People wind up at 600 pounds and lose, you know, 400 pounds over the course mm-hmm. of two years and become fit. It happens. So, like, you could do it too, you know. So, I've noticed, because we, we were talking about the heavy bag last week, do you remember? Yeah, the it's, heavy bag, It's yeah. still in my Love kitchen, it. but it's leaning up against the door. Like, I can I can go hit it every now and again. Yeah, just but I've noticed it. my shoulders are fucked. Yeah. So I don't know what, like I'm hitting it too hard or whatever. I feel like I dislocate my shoulder every time I hit the damn thing. Or so you I, just, you know, I just haven't, I've never done it. Right. Those are muscles that you're not normally yeah, yeah. taxing and now they are mm-hmm. complaining at you. So yeah, it's just yeah, like exactly. anything else. I mean, you're trying to make your body adapt to a, it's something that it's not used to and you'll yeah. always feel that adaptation. So yeah, yeah. it's totally normal. Jasmine, what you're feeling is completely normal. Just go mm-hmm. slow and in small increments and just keep repeating it. And when you're tired, rest. It's normal. It's okay. Um, it's all good. So Clay says, when recovering, is it better to participate? You've talked about this. This is good. In groups like this or to stay away from discussions. Mm-hmm. On one hand, you don't want to avoid hearing about anxiety and panic. On the other hand, participating just seems to be a safety behavior for some. Mm, it's really good. It's a good question. What's your, what's your take on this? My take on this is that you have to be super honest with yourself at all times, like brutally mm-hmm. honest with yourself at all times. Like, am I, am I here for social reasons, which is yeah. people yeah. become friends and just enjoy the interaction. Totally cool. Am I here because I'm, I have a specific question I'm trying to get answered. Am I here because it's a distraction? Mm-hmm. So ask yourself why you're participating in not just our group, but any group. Yeah. yeah. Why are you really doing it? Is this a distraction? Is it just to kill time? Is it just, is it social? Is it a safety behavior? Is it? Mm. And then you have to just act accordingly. So if you feel like if you're coming to seek reassurance. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. I think a lot of times people will come and like, well, let me, I'm feeling this thing. Let me see if anybody else has done that. And they either mm-hmm. just ask, they post and ask, or they just read to try yeah, and find yeah. out if anybody's ever done it. I think it's, I think you have to use, you have to just be honest with yourself and don't use it as avoidance or safety or shield or reassurance yeah, yeah. seeking. Does mm. that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, it's a, and honestly, it's a real tough one, man. Because like, it I can is. think, I can think one day, one one thing, one day, and then think something else the next. So yeah, yeah, mm. and and I think that's pretty normal. I I get that. Mm-hmm. I too, I do get it. Like, and then sometimes, like there's, sorry, there's, there's time. 
to where some and you can take that one of two ways, I guess, depending on how you feel at the time. You can either be happy for them and like, yeah, that's spurred me on, or you can think, oh shit, I can't do that, and it makes right. you feel worse. So right. every day is a different freaking response to the things that you see on there. Yeah, I, I would think sometimes maybe a good strategy is I know you've done this from time to time, just unplug for a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, un unplug from whatever groups you're in. Try mm -hmm. it for a, a couple hours. Try it for a day. Yeah, or two yeah. Days. Or just see how maybe. You yeah, right. maybe schedule some time in. Like if yeah. you wanna, if you wanna do it, yeah. half an hour at the end of the day or something, just go on, yep. read, read some stuff and help some people or whatever. Or I think, you know, and this talks to the, you know, the ty different types of groups. Like if mm -hmm. it's an inspiring place to be, if you're getting, if you feel like, if you get done, sometimes you get done, you think like, well, like you said, this that sucked. I didn't like reading about that. But sometimes yeah, yeah. you get done and feel like, oh, now I feel like going out and taking a walk or doing exactly. something myself. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a positive experience, then you stay out of it. If it's a negative experience, definitely don't. Or try and turn it into a positive. I think that's where what you said comes into it. Like, be honest with yourself. Why are you, get, why are you checking the group right now? Like, what right. are you looking for? Are you looking for some motivation? Or are you looking for some sympathy? Or yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. Are you just checking mm -hmm. in on your friends? You yeah, know? yeah. So, so it's the same, think... as, same as Googling your symptoms and shit. If you're going to go on the group for a purpose to try, yeah. like as a safety thing, then just don't. Just step back yeah. and wait and wait. Yep, I agree. And, and I think those reasons change over time also. Yeah, yeah, that's the so thing. So in the yeah. very beginning, you're going to use groups like this as reassurance and safety mm -hmm. and avoidance. That's normal. And then over time, you should start to use it for to, for edu to be educated and be motivated mm -hmm. and inspired, maybe inspire other people. Mm -hmm. um, you see the progression. Somebody comes and yeah, just yeah, asks, yeah. asks, 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 mm -hmm. reads, 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 and then suddenly a month or two later, they're answering other people. Hey, uh, it's okay. You're going to be okay. I was, yeah, yeah, I did yeah. this too. And like, there's natural progression. Just be aware. I think it's That's the best it. thing. Yeah, don't let it become a safety behavior too much. Um, Jared. Jared is Jared. You're you spend a lot of time. Jared asks, is it good to remind yourself truthful tips like it's only adrenaline? It's not harmful. Don't care in order to truly not care. So Jared struggles with this question constantly. Am I doing okay. it right? How do I mm -hmm. am I doing this right? Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? Mm -hmm. Here's the answer to this question, Jared. In, in, in all honestly, if you feel like you are further ahead today than you were a month ago or a week ago or six months ago, then you're doing it right. Exactly. You're doing it right. And if you feel like there are still obstacles that you are having a hard time overcoming, then adjust to be able to now tackle those things. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be doing that right too. So the, the pat answer, is it good to remind yourself truthful tips? It's good to remind yourself those things when you're feeling good. Like go through those exercises when you're in the morning, when you're having coffee, whatever it is like, okay, let me, let me remind myself. Let me go through my checklist here. It's only mm -hmm. adrenaline. It's only, I'm always okay. It's not harmful. I have to not care. I have to float. Cause when you're yeah, in yeah. the middle of, of the shit, when the shit hits, you can't, those thoughts don't work Yeah, yeah. to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So use those thoughts as practice when you're feeling good. And then, then you get into neutral. I don't care mode when you're feeling bad. And it just takes time. It just takes time. Agree. Like, yeah, it just takes time. But if you feel like you're getting, if you're doing things you weren't able to do, if you're if you're out there, if you're feeling less restricted, then you're doing it right. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. So, Robin, next. Fuck we have me, a lot isn't... of comments. There's a we're lot of comments. On an, if you want. We're on an, over an hour we're, already. Oh, we're over an hour. Okay. Yeah. Well, here we go. So we may have to do like time codes of this one. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Um, Robin, please, Billy, I know this is difficult, but what do you do if you're in complete breakdown of your nervous system? Uh, is it more effective to be taking care of this as an inpatient or is it, this is a, this is a really hard question, Robin, because, all right. So how do I answer this question? Yeah. yeah, I know. This is a different, it's a different thing. Like nervous breakdown, breakdown of the nervous system. I was going to talk to Robin directly. That's fine. The, this is a, this exists on a continuum, right? So what would be a nervous breakdown for one person might not be for another. And so there's no specific definition like medically of what a breakdown of your nervous system is. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're talking about this as if it's like the ultimate extreme case of 
of this disorder. And yeah, in yeah, actuality, yeah. it's kind of not. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it's kind of not. So this is what happens when there's more than just this disorder, right? Yeah, yeah. Like people with panic disorder and agoraphobia engineer their lives to live safely. So mm-hmm. they they do not wind up in complete nervous breakdown. Ner- that situation comes from yes this and just a pile of other things on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Robin wants to know do you do it in an in inpatient, outpatient? Inpatient, I will tell you for anybody that's watching, is the last resort. Like being checked into a, a psychiatric, into like a psychiatric ward mm-hmm. at a hospital. Or something. For those who have been there and feel free to chime in, like you will understand that is not mm-hmm. where you want to be because you don't belong there. But if it's an outpatient program where you go every day and you participate in therapy sessions, individual and group and their exercises, that might be a good thing mm-hmm. because sometimes people need structure. Like I must get up. I must get dressed. I must go to this place. I, I will do these classes. I will do these activities. There's no good answer to that, Robin. Unfortunately, it's an individual thing. And if you feel like you're having a hard time doing it on your own at home, then, then maybe an outpatient thing is where you want to be. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I know Robin and I have have spoken, and like I know that you, she doesn't want to be in an inpatient where you are literally like admitted and you are staying there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's because it's not where any of us really need to be. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Do you have anything to add to that one? That's a tough one. Not a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, our friend Robin is in a different place than most of us, and yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, and so it's related, but it's slightly different. Mm-hmm. Robin, I think all I could say is you have to make the best decision that you think is right for you. There's no, there's no definite answer I can give yeah, you. Yeah, and yeah. I, I have, mm-hmm. I do not have direct experience with that either. Yeah. Um, there's only a few left here, although more seem to be coming in. Oh, um, I know. So Donna, uh, switching the what ifs to a challenge, we can feel great about overcoming. This is like a different way, I guess. Mm-hmm. So we talked, we talked about that, about health anxiety. So Don is dealing with a serious health anxiety. What if, what if, what if it's compelling her to check, you know, check blood pressure, check heart rate. Yeah, yeah. It's a compulsion she's trying to overcome. And it's a, um, so you could take that as a challenge, whatever it is. We're going back to the beginning of the video. Like the first question, don't check. whatever it is. Yeah. Don't check. Want to check? Don't check. Want to check? Don't check. It's yeah. And maybe yeah, you, could yeah. gamif- you could almost gamify it. If it helps, I guess, mm-hmm. turn it into a challenge. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, I didn't. You know, I got through this 17 Reward times. Yourself. Yeah, something like that. It's not a bad thing. If you switch it to a challenge, that could be a positive thing. Mm. Wow. Okay. This is just a couple more and then we're going to have to kill it because we're just going to keep going and going. Why, uh, Gemma, Gemma Victoria, why a relapse or a blip feels like a huge deal if you've been symptom-free for so long and how to deal with these better. Okay. Here's an easy one. Setbacks. <laughs> Setbacks. No such thing. <clears throat> so... You are judging, Gemma, you're judging your success in the fact that you have been symptom free. That's mm-hmm. the answer. So, like, you truly need to be in a mindset where you are not in any way bothered or worried about those symptoms. So, if they come back, who the fuck cares in plain English? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that is where you need to be. So, that tells me that in a lot of cases, people who say that, like, I've had anxiety before, but I got over it and now it's back and I don't know what to do. Well, you got over it by running around it to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So usually that means that the way you got to symptom free wasn't really yeah, that, yeah. yeah in a way, mm-hmm. like you, you have still have some work to do. Mm-hmm. So how to deal with them better, Gemma, when the symptoms come back, it's not a setback. It's just an opportunity to deal with them maybe more effectively than you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is to learn to just let them be there, put your focus back on your breath, float through them, let them come and do the worst thing they know how to do. We've been through this over and over. Do it that way this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Billy's running out of gas. <laughs> I don't know about your daughter's trapped upstairs. I have had so many I have had moments recording where I have been easy. Like dizzy or just like really? out of it. Yeah, yeah. Today, so could anybody the... could anybody tell? I would no. have no idea. I'm talking to you and I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, no clue. Fuck it. All right. Fuck it. Keep going, man. Two more. Oh, and another one just came in. Uh, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> all right, we, we got to end it. We'll take Rebecca, Wendy, and Holly just ch- chimed in too. You really want to uh, overcome agoraphobia. It has been around a long time. It would be necessary to break down exposure into small steps and keep at it every day. Many times, 
total commitment is necessary. Yes, you are correct, Rebecca. But what if you are depressed also? This is difficult. Um, it would be really hard going if your life just revolved around exposure only and you may not want to get up in the morning. Yeah, that's a real thing. So, Rebecca, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if you're feeling that way. That's not that's that's tough. Um, so yes, many times every day over and over and over the fastest path out of the hole is, is just total commitment. You make it your full-time job. Mm -hmm. Okay. But <laughs> when, when you, you're just rushing through these now, come on. But when you get depressed, it's a hard, you lose your motivation. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the tip that I would have, you may not want to get up in the morning, always get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Number one, when you open your eyes, put your feet on the floor, get up, brush your teeth, wash your face, comb your hair, do something to be human, like mm -hmm. make tea, try to read a book, put on some music, something like you cannot let it snowball to the point where you lose your motivation. He's just buzzing you now, just like mocking you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it could be a challenge. But I think the more that you throw yourself into that task, I'm going to I'm going to keep working on my exposure. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep getting out. I'm going to challenge it. Like the beginning of depression is something that needs to be challenged. Because if you yes. just say, I don't feel good. I'm just going to lay in bed today. I'm just going to lay in the sofa and feel bad. That that stuff can snowball. Mm -hmm. So, Rebecca, my friend, what I'm going to suggest that you do is even though you feel like not doing things, you still have to do it anyway. Pretend if you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Because that's like, the only way that you're going to get the victories that are going to hopefully lift you out of it. Yeah. And, and like, even if the victories have to be super small, yeah, like you yeah. and I talked about, like, just get up and do the laundry or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something instead of just sitting around, move, do something. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just keep taking those. Just do that as much as you can. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, so I think, yeah, it can be difficult. It'd be difficult to maintain motivation when you feel that way, but just, Definitely. you just got to. You just got to do it. You just have to do your best to keep doing little things as much as possible, even if it's just things around the house. Clean the house. Organize the bookshelf you've been mm -hmm. meaning to organize. Make a video you've been meaning to make. Sing a song. Something. It doesn't matter. Anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sing, are you? <laughs> I was thinking about it. No. <laughs> not today. All right, Wendy. I know. I feel like now I'm just trying to brush through them. I don't mean to do that. That's Wendy. Okay. It's about CBT, how CBT therapy can help. Okay. It's easy. CBT therapy will help because if when done correctly, it will teach you how to not be afraid of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Right? You'll you'll learn to not be afraid of what you think and how you feel. And you'll mm -hmm. do that through cognitive exercises that you can do when you're not in panic mode and through exposure that's designed to make you panic. So that mm -hmm. you can learn to be that it's okay to panic and that you're still safe. That's how CBT therapy helps. CBT therapy helps by teaching you to feel what you're going to feel and think what you're going to think, but not be afraid of it. I think we discussed this before. Like it, a lot of it depends on who is actually delivering the CBT. Because I've had yes. CBT three times and yep. not really yep. picked up much from it. No, so no. we, you know, find somebody that actually deals with anxiety specifically. Yes. And I know that uh, Wendy, actually, Wendy lives like 12, 15 minutes from me. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. Fellow, fellow Long Islander. Um, so, I, but I know and I hear it a lot from people in the UK, the NHS, CBT. Uh -huh. and they've given me CBT, but then what you hear they did is not really CBT. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm on the waiting list at the moment. Yeah. So. But you're in a, you'd be in a different place, right? You're going to a different place, you're saying? Yeah, well, I've because I've moved, so I've gone yeah. from where I used to live to this place. But this is where I first had CBT, where I live now. Yeah, like, all them years ago. That makes sense. But I know I think... the the place that used to do the CBT. I drove past it the other week. It's all boarded up and shut down, and that. So uh, like, uh, it's not a good sign. Funding's going well over here. Hey, you know what? Here in the U.S., like you have to work to find somebody who specializes in anxiety yeah, disorders, yeah. behavioral therapy. So it would be the same in the U.K. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, yeah. every counselor is trained in that, mm. so they're doing the best they can. But Wendy, that's I, how I CBT will. Helps. I will yeah. share my CBT yeah. journey the experience. Like yeah, yeah, one, yeah. One of the best examples of how CBT works and what it does was Danny in Australia. Mm -hmm. She posted a video a while back. If you if you search for Danny D A N I her account, she posts a lot. But but she posted a video. A couple, maybe a month or so ago. I think I she actually, 
Remember, she flipped through her workbooks. Yeah, and she yeah. narrated like I did this. I had to learn to do this. She really took people through like this is what I did. And so she mm-hmm. literally was given CBT in a textbook form. Mm-hmm. And, and it's hugely successful for her. So, Wendy, that's what it can do. You have to find the right therapist. And I will add, because I think Wendy is the person who asked about this, like she found a therapist who she felt might be a little too pushy. Fuck that. Right. You want your CBT yeah, therapist yeah. should be pushy. They uh-huh. are there like like if you wanted to learn to, you know, run 100 meter sprint in the in the Olympics, your coach would push you hard and kick your ass to make you a better sprinter. Mm-hmm. Well, that is what your therapist should do. Your therapist is there to push you, not to be yeah, gentle yeah. and kind and like mm-hmm. all of those things. They're going to they she's there to teach you how to intentionally be uncomfortable. That's so, it. yeah, yeah. And I think what some people fall down with also, and I, I think Wendy would be okay with me saying this, she was concerned because like she wanted to do the old like, well, let me settle down after the holidays and like take it mm-hmm. and then, then I'll start. And the therapist was like, oh, no, you start now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some people get put off by that. I so think I, I said it like the first time I ever, it might have been the second time I ever had CBT. We did like an exposure thing. I went out with a therapist, walked into town and that. And yeah. then the next week, I, I didn't bother going because it was too hard. Like, it's that's the hard. difference between me now and then. Like, right. now would be like, I know right. that that was the most valuable experience that a therapist has ever given me. But I, it was just like, you weren't I'm ready doing that for again. It that. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. And so many people run into that when they run into CBT and they're like, okay, make me feel better. And like, it's not yeah, there to yeah. make you feel better. It's in a Why way, it's mean, like, I've got to do something. Right. So it's I didn't either sign the up for this. Usually the problem with CBT is the expectation is wrong. Like you're going to make my anxiety go away, which yeah, isn't yeah. the way that works. First, they make mm-hmm. you not afraid of it. And then it goes away. And and not understanding like, oh, this is actually I have to do hard things and mm-hmm. I have to start doing them right now. So mm-hmm. I can't do things like, well, let me just wait until the holidays are over and the yeah, kids are yeah. back to school and everything's a little more calm. Like, no, 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 no. Like avoidance, no avoidance. So, yeah, you're not that's just, what CBT. You're, you're not just going to tell me how to stop it. What? Right. Right. Like you teach me how to breathe so that yeah. when I, I won't ever have a panic attack again. Like that's Good. not what it does. Not what it does. So you have work to do, my friend. Like get at it. And in months, in a couple of months, you'll be way ahead of the game if you're doing it. Trust me on this. Yeah, yeah. And the last one, Holly, intrusive thoughts. Um, yeah, that's going to have to be the last one. Um, intrusive more- thoughts. No, this, no, that's it. I think we hit them all. <laughs> so how do you deal with intrusive thoughts? We, we've talked about that one too a lot. Like you, you deal with it by learning. Meditation is a good skill. Susan mm-hmm. does the meditation and the mindfulness stuff. Like watch her videos, see what she's talking about. It, thinking is a behavior too, right? Like anything else. So, so cognition is a behavior. So you have to yeah, learn yeah. to put your, yeah, put your brain in neutral. And when you have that thought, my way back when I was taught, like a thought is just a thought. It's not reality. Mm-hmm. And I can choose to have another thought. That's the basis of, of dealing with intrusive thoughts. Like, oh, I just had this thought that I might have, you know, some horrible disease or that this bad thing might happen if I leave my house. I'm going to think about something yeah, yeah. else. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Have that thought. Let it float out the other side of my head and put my focus somewhere else. That's how you do it. Job done. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. I, it's really, it's very dry. Yeah. I know I didn't, what it is what it is. Like, there's no magic to intrusive thoughts. You just have to learn to acknowledge them. Don't engage with them and put your focus somewhere else. Put your brain in neutral is better. But... If you have yeah, to, yeah. replace the thought with a different thought. Think about anything. Think about like what you ate for dinner or whatever. You know, doesn't matter. So there you go. We've been at it a long time. <laughs> so my know, mouth is man. actually dry. <clears throat> How long have we been going? Probably an hour 20? One hour. It's over, yeah, just over an hour 20. I feel like I've just been sitting here for the last like 40 minutes. That's I right. feel like I did nothing but yammer, 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 yammer. You nailed it, mate. You nailed Man, it. It's a lot of talking, dude. Mm. Um, <laughs> so there you go. I don't know. What else we got? I don't know if anybody's hanging in this far, you know. <laughs> of course they are. And we have to do the time code thing. At an hour 10, we talk about CBT. Yeah. Vaping. Yeah. Yeah. Vaping. <laughs> so I think we're good. Anybody have I a think comment we're pretty or much done. I think question we're pretty much about done. like the only thing I the yeah. only thing I had to add was the small victory thing that we already discussed. Like because I've been not really thinking about the smaller things that I've been doing this week. Because I thought to myself like I haven't really done a lot this week. But when I actually okay. sit and think about it, like I've been out, had my hair cut, 
went and got fuel a couple of times, went to my local shop, and but because those things are becoming like the new norm. Yes. You know what I mean? That's that's the thing. Like, they're still victories. That's still huge. Victories. That's yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, those are becoming normal things now. Mm-hmm. In a couple of weeks of just doing that, those will just be normal things. Yeah, yeah. They, like they the probably drive-thru. are. We, yeah, we went through the drive through the other night, and it's just, like, I'm not even thinking about it. It's just, it's crazy. The, right, like, like that's freeze. not something... Did you, I freeze? You, did for, you, you froze for a second, yeah. So yeah, there's sure. lag, a little lag. Um, that's not something you would have considered doing, the drive through Yeah, yeah, it's mad when I sit and think about it. Like, if I probably went back and watched the first one of these that we did, I'm probably talking differently about things in that. It's mad. Oh, yeah, hugely different. Yeah, Just yeah. like when we picked up back in, like, November or whatever it was, we started uh-huh. doing these again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, like, very, very different. Like, you're just Man, relaxed, you're, calm, you're like, positive, you're joking, you're, like, uh-huh. talking about all the victories. Oh, huge, huge change. Tremendous. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there you go. Let me so ask you a silly question. Even though, we, even though we've been at it for so long, we'll go a little bit longer. Come and on, you man. can feel, feel free to edit this out if you like. But So, like, usually, your dad is with you. Mm-hmm. Is that... Um, which is great. I mean, it's awesome that you spend time with your yeah. dad. It's not, not a bad yeah. thing. So is that a thing like you feel like if he wasn't with you, you wouldn't do those things? It depends what it is. Okay. It depends what it is. Yeah. So uh, like nine times out of ten, I would rather have somebody with me at the moment. It's that thing from earlier. It's the safety should, thing. Should you take your water or not? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, certainly better to, to go through mm-hmm. the drive-thru with your dad than to not well, go that, through no, the drive through Like he doesn't come to the drive-thru in that. Like that was just me and the little one. Me and the oh. Yeah, but yeah. Like it was only... little, you know. No, I know. It's bigger than me. <laughs> bigger ego, anyway. If that's possible. <laughs> but, um, right. I went to the drive-thru not long on my own. Not long ago on my own. Like I didn't make a video of it. Didn't make a big song and dance about it because it was just like I'm just yeah. going to the drive-thru. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. That's freaking awesome. That's the fir- first time I've ever done that. Gone yeah. through the drive-thru on my own, but it just was just like, it. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's it. No big deal. That's yeah. how you can gauge your progress when you just notice these that you start doing these other things, like the school run and that. I've done yeah. the first week back at the school run, and like nothing. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's just yeah. what you do now. That's great because I, I the only reason why I asked is you mentioned the drive through and I think you had the video, and you guys are just so funny. Did that spit something oh, out of the window? Shit. Like that was, that was great. Really, like, oh shit! Yeah, because we went to the dog. That place. was a drive through. Yeah, I don't no, think it was the dog, that. dog's trust. Oh, oh right. that's what that was. For some reason, I thought you were in a drive through on the way home, and you guys were just mm-hmm. cracking jokes, and it was just so funny. Right. It was the, <laughs> dro- the dog's trust. We just pulled out of the drug dog's trust car park, and he wanted to spit his gum out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Made me laugh so hard. <laughs> so oh, great hilarious. Oh, rabble rouser yes anyway. but that's another thing like last Sunday I went to the friggin dogs trust like yeah. 45 minute journey got out of my car to walk around the Aston Martins that were parked up and yeah, yeah. just madness no problem just right stuff, stuff that I wouldn't have considered doing yeah how long did you spend in there because I mean you're actually just kind of hanging around just you're literally yeah, pro- trying like, to be in there as about long, yeah. 40 minutes yeah 40 minutes to an hour probably yeah, just walking yeah. up and down pretty impressive jobs are good no dog though no I also I weren't going to say anything but I can't get my old dog back either oh so I messaged the person that has the dog yeah and, and apparently like the dog's really settled in with her and the kids and their other dogs and that so I'm yeah. not gonna like it's been seven months, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure she's happy there. We'll leave so, it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's a good outing, though. The dogs trust. We'll end on a sour note. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I might. I don't know what to do. Whether to go back to the dogs trust, maybe rescue one, or get a pup, or what. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, think about it. I might get a virtual dog. <sighs> so much easier. <laughs> you get a virtual dog. Very yeah. good. All right. I think we have run our course. Have we done it? If We've anybody's made... made it through the whole thing, there should be some sort of prize. So thanks. Yeah, yeah, massive thumbs up to you. Well done. Yeah. Drop a comment. Yes. Drop a comment yes. right now if you're still here. Yeah, exactly. Drop a comment and like if you have any other topic suggestions, send them on out. And like, yeah, sub- subscribe to whatever channel you're watching and hit the notification bell. I haven't uploaded any of them to mine yet. I just. I think I did last week's. I'm so We're slacking. 
I yeah. am so lazy with this. So we'll see. All right. I think we're good, man. You're the one recording, so you got to stop it. Oh, right. Okay. You have to put down your vape pen long enough. Just All right, guys. Thanks, yeah. thanks for hanging in there. Peace. Peace out. See you on the next one. We'll see you next week. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be more talkative. <laughs> you were fine. See you later. All right.